Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to be looking at the Blender Foundation's animated movie Hero. Now, initially, while playing around with Blender's 2D animation features using the grease pencil, I was thinking that most of everything that you could do would be shape tweened, basically. Your first animation in Blender is uh, pretty much the first video that I made on Blender. And although you can use the shape tweening feature that I've basically described inside of that video for a number of things, I, I wouldn't suggest you using it all the time. Eventually, a subscriber uh, brought to my attention that you could download some of the project files for this animated movie. And what I've noticed is that most of it, 99% of it, is traditionally animated. Now, of course, you know, the line work is a little bit sloppy, at least in my point of view. But then again, the Blender Foundation was working with the grease pencil before the grease pencil was even a finished product. And so, Given their creative constraints, I would say that this is an excellent animation. And what better way to start learning how to animate inside of Blender with the grease pencil than from the Blender Foundation's project files themselves. One thing of note is that they used 3D models in concert with their 2D animations, as well as doing some rotoscoping with some 3D models as well. And throughout this video, I will go through a little bit of that with you. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay. Okay, so first off, it's kind of important to, to kind of realize that everything inside of this is traditionally animated. And uh, yeah, you can have a, you you can actually download uh, this right off of the Blender Cloud, I believe. It's weird because like even even the rocks are growing like plants to some extent. It's weird. Um, like here, let me let me go ahead and play that over again. So like you look at the rocks, they're like sprouting out. But here, let me show you this. Okay, so this is the whole scene right here. And not all of them are are actually aligned perfectly with the camera, like. Uh, this tree right here, like within this region here, I, it's like tilted or something like that. It's, it's kind of kind of weird. I don't know why that's the case, but uh, yeah, I mean, and uh, you see, this is just part of the animation. Like what they wound up doing is they pretty much just made this into a collection, and uh, then they just copied that collection uh, throughout the map, throughout the environment that it wound up in in the final version of the cartoon. So that's kind of cool. So let's go on to the next one. All right, so this is a good one. Now sometimes uh, like it loads up, and uh, you know you don't see everything immediately. So if you click on that button right there, then suddenly you got the the view that you want. Now when you're in the camera view, you don't wind up seeing these two objects. Uh, they're just purely for, you know, lighting effects and such like that. That's the only reason why they exist the way they do. It just makes the, the world feel a little fleshed out. And so when you play the animation, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, something's weird. Something weird is going on. Um, there's some sort of glow effect applied to them, and I don't know if that's normal or if that's what it should have been. Uh, you can see that there's a shadow effect, and this this is inside of the um, uh, the visual effects properties. Like if I play around with the shadow, okay, cool. You can actually see like around here what the shadow's doing and all that. Uh, let me press Control Z until that glow effect ap appears again. It's just a little too strong. Um, I'm gonna dial that down and dial it down. Over here yeah that's that's just I don't I don't know why anyone would use that like the glow effect you would think that it would be more like something like that for the glow effect yeah um I don't see any reason for that uh, but yeah so the the shadow you can rotate the shadow uh, it seems like it works on its own axis uh, where it's gonna rotate uh, you can see the shadow moving around I, I don't like that but that that's interesting uh, so scale, okay, we, you can even change its position vertically and stuff like that. Uh, offset, yeah, okay, so if you rotate it, it looks like you're able to kind of move its offset and uh, kind of line it up with your character a little bit more, but in this case, it, that wouldn't look very good at that, so I'm going to set the, the scale of rotation at uh, zero degrees and just move this stuff right back to where it belongs. Uh, it looks like there's a blur effect that's applied to the uh, shadow and so that's kind of cool uh, so let, let's just go ahead and play this animation real quick uh, so this is everything that's appearing on the screen right here 
and you press play. All he's doing really is just walking up a flight of stairs. But as we rotate around the scene, you can actually see that uh, he's not actually moving up the stairs. He's actually just moving straight up, and he appears as though he's walking. Uh, one thing that I don't remember seeing it, are these items right here. Like, let me see if I can select them. These items right here. But they appear to be the shadows for these guys right here. So I guess maybe they're hidden from render or something like that. Uh, I don't know how to really do that instead of Blender, but uh, I guess it's possible that, that they could be hidden from uh, being rendered and only having their shadows be rendered. I don't know. Or maybe they might have composited it all together and, and that's it. Now the shadow effect even, um, like the, this effect that's going on uh, here for the shadow, like even it, well it's not on the same plane as the grease pencil, but it is a flat uh, object just like grease pencil. So that's interesting. So nothing else is really animated in this scene. It's just this guy right here. Uh, I don't know why he is glowing blue but it looks like he's got a rim light on him and it just seems like it's just a little bit too strong like I don't know that that would be better I don't know or not and the rim lighting on these guys seems all wrong like if it's on like if it's because of this power source you would think that the rim lighting would be more so like that for these guys uh I I don't know, just my thoughts. Uh, as I rotate around here, uh, you can see, yeah, you know, there's a shadow effect applied here with, uh, uh, with these guys right here. You can see the shadows for them right here, but that looks kind of weird. Uh, you can even see the shadow effect here. Uh, you would think that if they wanted the shadows to appear like that, they like they would have maybe changed their position a little bit to maybe something more like that. But even still, you, you wind up with their shadows overlapping with the stairs, and that doesn't quite look right. So I, I don't know what what they would do about that uh, but anyhow and I guess there's a blur effect applied to these guys so like you can ramp up the blur okay if that doesn't appear to be doing anything rotation samples yeah see so that blurred them up pretty good and let's see if I change the X and Y values okay yeah they they wind up having a lot more clarity and such like that but once you increase the samples then uh, then you can see them start to blur uh, a bit more now this scene it, it just consists of uh, these two lighting objects like shadow objects okay so let me just move them out of the way and uh, this right here which is a uh, a torus and basically just a cube that they quickly uh, just kind of distorted a little bit added some bevels and, and then did a boolean between the two objects and that could just easily make that this object right here and they actually reuse this asset multiple times throughout the animation and uh, you know it's not like a very difficult thing to 3d model at all and then uh, we got these uh, tubes here at the top now these tubes are have been created multiple ways and in, in multiple different files but like you'll notice that all three of these tubes do not actually connect at this point right here you know actually I think I think this is the same model of tubes that they use in the other scene uh, you'll see what I mean later it's just they were positioned differently and then there's this object right here and then this object right here which is obviously mirrored let me see if I can zoom in on it okay so they're basically just a bunch of ropes really without any fibers they're supposed to be like cables and stuff like that and then there's this right here and that's not very difficult to model and this right here and uh, I guess there's this power source here um, uh, and that's just a plane really and, and that this this goes inside of this thing here um, and then this and I guess there's some sort of ring right here so this isn't a very difficult scene to create so let me just close out of that and open up the next one. Okay, so this is where things start to kind of get interesting. So like these characters in the background, um, if we go into, if, if I can select them, then that would be ideal. If I select them and then go into the visual effects, uh, since they're behind him, we can, we can actually see that there is a blur effect. And, uh, you know, we can kind of ramp that up, ramp up the samples and stuff. Oh, wait a second. I guess there is no blur effect after all. Oh, no, there is a blur effect okay so like if we ramp up the samples uh 
let's say, to 14, and we start playing around with the X and Y, they really do look like they're in the background. We press play to see the animation, and, uh, yeah, it looks really good. So, really quick here, taking a look at the background, we see this asset once again. It was used in the previous scene, and then they reuse this asset again. They just situated them in, in a different sort of way, and now it looks like this is like a chimney to a house or something like that. Kind of interesting how you're able to do that. All right, try to notice what the camera is doing here. You press play. Okay, so the camera, it pretty much just starts, it turns to look up, okay? Which is kind of cool. Let me go ahead and get that so that the visuals all are applied. Okay, looks really good, looks nice. Okay, this is actually not quite the exact same as how it was. This asset right here, although it appears as though it's, it's pretty much the same asset, um, it looks like it's been modified for this scene to make it a little bit more dramatic. So when I go into the camera mode, it just, you know, having it curve at the top where it didn't curve in the previous scene, uh, it might actually make it look more dramatic, but really it's not like, I don't think you can really even see it do that, it curving. I don't know, it's strange. Yeah, it's not even in the camera's view. So yeah, it doing this weird curve effect wasn't even necessary. And I think this is the same model that was in the previous scene. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, it's possible that this is a, a whole new asset with the uh, with these tubes here. Notice that they don't connect. Well, that doesn't really matter because, you know, it's not like you ever see them. Since you're looking up at it, it's not like the camera is designed to be up here. So it doesn't matter if they connect or not, okay? And so, once again, you know, this scene consists of this object right here. I guess they decided on, you know, a stretched out torus and all of that, which is kind of a weird decision. This tubing, this, this stuff here, this thing here, uh, the cords, these things which were in the previous scene, but they look modified, and then the, the staircase, okay? So let me press Control z a bunch of times. All right, so if we go frame by frame and look at the scene, it's, it's kind of interesting because like, if you're not in the camera's point of view, it like the effects here when he dashes right there, like they're in a completely different location. And that's fine because, you know, in the camera's view, it all looks just right. And notice how like really the, the where he's traveled, let's see. Yeah, okay, so he is, he is right, oh, he is tiny, he is right here. Here, okay right here and then he dashes and then I think he dashes one more time or not I, I guess that's it that's the whole animation he's right here so he just traveled from here to about right here okay and yet from the camera's point of view by the end of the animation he looks like he's really stinking far away and all they really did was just it's really impressionistic when he starts getting really small like they didn't even they, they didn't uh, try to flesh him out or make him look fancy or anything and that's fine it's traditionally animated so it doesn't need to be Okay, now I'm gonna show you something that's kind of cool. All right, so I keep zooming out, keep zooming out, and then all of a sudden we see that he's in a sphere that has been painted to look like a sky. And, uh, you know, they just, they reuse this sky multiple times uh, throughout uh, the entire, like, the entire cartoon. It's just they tilted it on this side because the sun is here. But what I find kind of weird is how I never noticed until I actually started studying this thing that, you know, he starts dashing up. Okay, I'd never really noticed that, you know, there's brown to, you know, where the sky is kind of next to the horizon and stuff like that. I never really noticed that. So, like, if I rotate, the brown right here is what I'm talking about, okay? And I guess this is a light source, and I guess the light source kind of penetrates through the sphere, I guess, maybe? Are you able to tell Blender to behave like that? Like, what happens if I delete this, this here, okay? Let, let's take a look and see. So, I go into to the scene and really I don't see any difference. I don't see anything as having changed, which is kind of weird. So yeah, you know, that's take it for what it's worth. All right, so the next animation, the airplanes. So the airplanes fly towards us and then, you know, he's bouncing around. Okay, notice the sky, okay? So the sky is mostly, it, like it appears to be most, mostly stationary. And then once it goes to being a profile view, all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the sky is whizzing by, it's going by really 
really fast, uh, which is really cool and all that. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess the camera is not viewable at this point in time. But uh, let's see. Am I able to camera lens focus? To, um, let's see. View. Okay. I, I don't know how to get the camera to be visible. But really, like, if we play this animation outside of the camera, what we wind up seeing is this. Like, they fly and then they stop. Okay. And then all of a sudden the sky is rotating like I zoom out and you can see that you know it's the same sky as last time I mean it looks like it's been a little bit diffused than from the last time and it just starts rotating on cue and that creates the effect that uh, when it's profile view that you know they're flying really fast okay and uh, here's something also kind of interesting let me kind of get close to this right here okay if we play the animation you see something kind of weird. Okay, did you see that? Okay, so like, I'm gonna just go frame by frame. Notice how he rotates. And that's because of the camera angle. Uh, like, um, if we if we go into the camera angle and we go from 63, frame 63 to here, like, it was necessary for the grease pencil to start to rotate. So, you know, the camera is going from, like, this position here to this position here, okay? So, as I flip through the frames, you can actually see the grease pencil has rotated. See? Kind of cool. Now, let's take a look at the other airship okay uh, we can see that there's a really basic base mesh uh, for uh, who these guys that are in uh, the other ships or aircraft it works I mean it doesn't have to look amazing but yeah it, it works uh, and you also notice uh, one of the observations that I had earlier was that hey you know uh, the uh, he's bouncing okay outside of the camera let's play it again He's really not bouncing, okay? So that bouncing effect is all within the camera, okay? And all of this is traditionally animated except for the spinning sky and the 3D models, okay? Everything inside of this hero movie is, uh, is, is traditionally animated. So let me go to the next one. Okay, so let me let me show you uh, show you the animation first. So he's kind of ice skates his way through the sky and then stomps on a wing and then stomps on the other wing and breaks both wings. Okay, so uh, let me show you something. This asset down here, let me kind of go frame by frame, okay? So he's kind of ice skating his way over there, you know? Okay, so he stomps on it and it doesn't look like he lines up with it at all, but you know, when you go into the camera's angle, it looks like he does, so that's fine. So he stomps on it and then all of a sudden that asset, that 3D asset is being used, okay? And so he stomps on it, boo, it flies outside of the camera's view, okay? So it's outside of the camera's view and you can see it right there, it's it's no longer in view. And now he, he goes to the other one and he he stomps on it and all of a sudden that same asset is being reused and uh, yeah until it goes out of camera okay so they just reuse the same asset twice kind of fascinating so in a, in a side view kind of want to see how this works out okay so he's not moving towards the camera even a little bit uh, he, he's staying like on the y-axis. He's not he's not moving at all. So that's interesting So let's move on to the next one uh, Once again, you know, they're inside of a sphere. So that's interesting. So let's move on to the next one All right, so the lightning I don't know why it looks so weird But like when I go to the lightning like it, it's got that weird effect. I, I don't know why it's doing that uh, Let me select the lightning and uh, Let's go into the effects right here visual effect properties properties and uh, let's kind of move the X and Y a little bit and this is just a, a luminance effect okay so I don't know if it looked like that in in the original cartoon but yeah that just doesn't look right uh, let's let's go back yeah let's because it didn't look like in the in the final cartoon it didn't actually look like what it initially looked like on the screen okay and you know maybe what if we gave it a 100 percent white yeah that looks a lot better all right so the camera's zooming in towards this blimp and they are fighting on the blimp okay they are just silhouettes all right and uh, the blimp is a two-dimensional object as well once again they are inside of a sphere these clouds appear to be 3d models okay but what's interesting about them 
is this. Like, let me let me get close to here. If I grab this, looks like grease pencil material that's just conformed to the shape of it. Same thing here. It looks like grease pencil. Let, let's take a look at the effect of it. No, I guess that's not a grease pencil. I guess those are actual objects. So let's see particle properties. Let's see. I guess they wanted to make this look like it glows in the dark. Uh, like this thing that I'm rotating around on these clouds. Honestly, I don't think that these clouds in this animation look very convincing, but you know, they're only on the screen for a short period of time. And uh, you know, you see a blimp, you see thunder and lightning basically, and clouds off in the distance. And I guess you're just for a moment convinced that those are clouds. Uh, but what I found most interesting about this animation was uh, just, you know, I press play and, you know, they, they have like experimental lightning going off over here and they have some silhouettes. If I select the silhouettes, yeah, I can take a look at their layers and, uh, you know, you can kind of see the various stages that this went through. You can see like a really rough animation going on and then another refinement, I guess. It's really difficult to see. Let me see if I can go into a different mode. Okay, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, these clouds are just 3D models. That's that's just bizarre to me. And so that's one version of it. And then another version of their fight. And this is actually way more fleshed out than what we wound up getting. Uh, because we wound up getting, like, silhouettes. And then the color, you know, they, I guess they... This is this is it as a silhouette. Uh, I switch view modes and we can see that they're just black and white. Uh, but I switch back and that's what we got. And then this is called Farquaad. I don't know why is called Farquaad, and then Bane. Oh, Farquaad is... Okay, Farquaad and, ba uh, and Bane. That's the name of the characters. Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, so that's this animation, you know, if I go into the sphere and uh, play the animation in this view mode, we can actually see that the moon is even a three-dimensional object. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, so this one's kind of interesting, okay? Let me go ahead and play the animation. He smacks this little pillar. His jetpack malfunction the power source flies out. The camera turns, does a full 180 degrees, okay? That's what we see. And then he jumps down, we look down at him, and then he's caught by his friend's aircraft, okay? So at least that's how we perceive it. But once again, like on the X and Y axis, uh, the X, on, on the Y axis, he's not moving at all throughout the entire animation, okay? He's staying completely still, okay? Except for on the, you know, the... On the other axis, axes, he, he's able to move because it's a, a two-dimensional ob uh, object moving in three-dimensional space. Okay, but on the y-axis, he's not moving at all. But this is what's actually happening in the scene. Okay, so he smacks the pillar. It doesn't look like he hit the pillar because we're not in the camera's view. Okay. And then all of a sudden his jetpack malfunctions and then he kind of loses control. Power source flies out of his hands and then he gets up and then here's the cool part. The blimp actually rotates. Yeah, so the blimp is rotating here and so the camera didn't actually turn at all. Camera didn't turn and then he goes after it, jumps off the edge of, of the blimp. Now, when I go into the camera view, you know, it, it looks like it works. When I'm outside of the camera view, not so much, you know, it doesn't, like, he's, he's pretty far away from the, from the edge of the blimp, okay? And here's, here's, here's what's cool. Okay, so then, all of a sudden, the world turns, like the sky rotates. Okay, so the camera is actually staying completely still throughout this entire animation, okay? So it rotates a little bit right here, because that's when, when the blimp rotated. And then when he jumps off, the sky rotates so that this uh, blue section or, or dark blue section uh, becomes visible. Okay, so once again, let's go here, play the animation. He hits the pillar, his jetpack malfunctions, he loses the power source, goes after it, the blimp rotates, the sky rotates. Fascinating. Fascinating. That is cool. That is very interesting to me. And that's all it took. I mean, it's uh, uh, this this 3D model of the of the blimp. Now, I don't know why this plane exists. I guess it's hidden from being rendered. And I don't know why the like these other posts exist because they're not actually attached to the blimp. When I play the animation, do we actually get to see them? Okay, I guess we do see them. Uh, I guess it just adds an, a, a little layer of uh, of detail, I guess. I mean, that that's a little too sloppy. 
I mean, they, they pulled it off well for this animation, but for that post to just be there and not actually attached to the blimp, that's just bizarre to me. So, yeah, so the scene consists of this and this blimp. And uh, if I change view modes, you know, the blimp isn't, like, super elaborate at all. I mean, that's uh, basically a, a big sphere that's been uh, just elongated. And, uh, you know, they it, it's got uh, a little bit of something going on here. And then they just got these little posts, um, which, you know, if I... If I zoom in on them, ugh. yeah, they they're not elaborate at all. In fact, you know, the, this this cap that's put on top of them, it looks like it's completely off center, even. So like, not really much thought went into making this background at all. It is a super superficial background, and and most of what makes it convincing is purely in just how well it fits in the lighting, and that's it. Its shape and the lighting, like it's basic basic shape. But then again, how elaborate does a a blimp need to be. Okay, this is awesome. This is so cool. So here, if we go into the camera's view, you can see that they animated a three-dimensional model, and they pretty much just traced that the animation of that 3D model. Now, when you're dealing with a geometric shape and you're getting it to rotate and move about, like that is extremely difficult to pull off. You know, I teach how to draw in perspective in my channel, but that's a lot of math, and there's a lot of ways to really screw that up. And they just went frame by frame tracing that, that gun. Yeah, it looks really good. What I don't really understand is why isn't this lightning animated? Like, what's going on with this lightning? Is it, did they try out a three-dimensional lightning? Yeah, that, they tried to do a three-dimensional lightning or something like that. I, I don't know what's going on there inside of this file, but it's interesting. All right, this is actually a really interesting scene, and I'm actually going to open up the last file inside of here to take a look at it as well. Okay, so these two files uh, that I have side by side, uh, this is an early version of it right here. All right, you can see that. Uh, now, when I go to the other one, you know, this is the the final version of it. Okay, so when I get outside of the camera's view, uh, we can see that the scene consists of uh, pretty much just, let me go into object mode, like just that. Like, this is all one object. And then there's another object. There's this, which is a plane, and it has particles applied to it, and they are inside of a sphere. And uh, you press play, and that sphere is rotating. Okay, there's one other object inside of the scene, and that is this object right here. And it is an awesome object. So basically, I'm going to go into the particle properties really quick here, and uh, I'm going to select this plane up here. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of show what I observe here. So when I go over to this other scene, this is something I find interesting about the camera. They have this little square, and I guess it helps them animate the uh, the camera to, to be all bouncy and such like that. So when when you, I get into the camera's point of view, it, it really does feel like, you know, they're they're flying and it's the camera's bouncing. It looks real nice, okay? Um, and, like, when, when you're in the camera's view drawing and such, it might actually be helpful to only see what's inside of that square, what, what the camera sees, uh, rather than anything beyond that. So I, I can understand how that can be helpful. But anyhow, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and select this uh, up here, and I'm going to just go into the particle uh, physics for it, particle properties, and press plus, okay? So we can already see that there is a particle system, but the number of particles, let's say 2,000, okay, that looks good, but the, when the animation starts, it, you know, it, that's when the rain starts, or right now it looks like snow. So that looks wrong, so let's say uh, what the start frame should be. Well, let's say negative 60, okay? That looks good. That, that looks like it's raining throughout the whole time. And let's see, um, lifetime 50, let's, let's take a look at what they did. Lifetime 297. I, I don't really know what lifetime means. I guess that's how long they will fall, so 297. But they didn't need it to fall all that far. I mean, like, where, where do, do the particles die at, at that specific number. Okay, now the particles are acting really weird. Uh, lifetime. Yeah, I, I don't know what lifetime means, but it was behaving kind of weird there for a moment. Anyhow, so we go over to this other Blender file, the finished version of it, and uh, let's see here. Velocity set to 1. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't think they did anything with that. Velocity 1. Yeah, they didn't do anything with that. Uh, Newtonian physics is in my file, so let's see if they have Newtonian. Newtonian, mass 1. Let's see, mass 1. Okay, forces. 
forces I have the forces zeroed out forces are zeroed out in the original or in the finished version and then render as object okay so render as object and let's see instance let's go ahead and click on this this raindrop here this object here that that I said was really awesome and then let's ramp up the scale of it okay so that's what it looks like right there uh, let me deselect the uh, the particles and I now have the exact same rain effect really as in the finished version now now I, I guess I can do some other things with it let me select the particle object again the the, the plane and let's see here I, I can do other things with this like uh, on render it says scale randomness we can actually really mess with that and so now different raindrops are at different sizes so that can look really cool so yeah that's uh, this animation uh, right here all right let's go to the next one okay so this is the uh, animation here going on it looks like it's an unfinished animation and that's fine but like what I find most interesting is like uh, well I don't get it there's one moment where everything looks nice okay this looks nice okay so you'll notice that the distance from one character to the other is just it, it feels like just inches but you know all you need is overlap Th this woman here this this old woman in the background here she is not very far away but since she is since this woman here is more so in front of this old woman here that's all you need you need overlap and then this old woman is drawn really small and that creates that effect now all that's really in the background is just this that just this one singular matte painting and that's it and it's actually a fairly good painting so on to the next one so this is uh, I'm there's not really much for me to talk about here but uh, uh, this is their airplane for Hero, okay? Just a really well executed 3D model, uh, really high resolution. You can actually see all of those uh, polygons and stuff like that. It, it says that there are 353,000 vertices, okay? So pretty high resolution for, for just one object. Basically, hopefully I hope that this, uh, this video can kind of help you guys try to understand how to animate inside of Blender. Uh, once again, this was all traditionally animated. Even though Blender has some tweening features, ultimately, I think that you have to kind of revert to a traditional animation style for Blender. Uh, there are some people that are experimenting with cutout animation rigs, and they do work, but they also tend to have some problems to their design. Ultimately, I really just wish that Blender would go more towards the Kakani approach. Kakani is a very good piece of software on basically shape morphing and uh, it has a very very traditional animation workflow sort of feel to it it does all of your in-betweens for you and uh, I really wish that that the, the blender foundation would uh, take advantage of, of the blender software to make it so that it, it has some kikani like features inside of it uh, but as of right now that doesn't exist and so for traditional animators I think that you would love blender uh, for the cutout animators I think that you will have to know just about everything about the 3D, like the 3D aspect of Blender before you go about <laughs> mastering uh, cutout animations inside of Grease Pencil uh, to kind of see if the Grease Pencil has the same sort of features and such like that. By and large, that's what I've noticed uh, people are doing when they're experimenting with the, with the cutout animation aspect of everything with the Grease Pencil. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it. If you guys have enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you guys would like to participate with me and my community, feel free to join my Discord. A link to my Discord is in the video description below. If you'd like to support this channel, there's an image of my mascot in the upper right corner of the screen right now. It leads to my Patreon. Any support would be much appreciated. And if you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.